I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. Sebastian Gork is the national security strategist for Fox News. He's also the author of the new book, the best-selling author, Seb Gorka. His new book is Why We Fight. We turn now to the midterms, which is not a fight. It's a contest, electioneering. Everybody does it. I'm going to turn things around, Seb, and start in the Senate. The caravan we talked to before, or caravans, the caravans following Kavanaugh seem to have profoundly uh, changed the outlook for the Republican Party in the Senate. I'm looking at Texas, Arizona, Nevada, Michigan, Missouri. All of a sudden, it tumbles out that the Republicans are in command of this. Do you believe that would have always happened, or is this a consequence of the Democratic aggression with Kavanaugh and the consequence of the Democrats' unwillingness unwillingness to resolve immigration? How do you measure it? Reading, uh, I think, the most effective barometer today is, is not the polls. It is social media. And reading social media, I think the lion's share of the explanation must be put uh, at the feet of the Democrats' behavior during Kavanaugh. The, the shifts were measurable. The, the general sentiment away from the Democrats and towards the present Republicans was almost instantaneous after the treatment he was given at the hands of, of the Democrat senators. So, yes, I, I think it, it is the last three weeks that have turned the tide measurably. The Kavanaugh hearings uh, not resolved yet. We have news that Senator Grassley has made a criminal invest, a criminal recommendation uh, to the Department of Justice about the behavior of one particular attorney. I don't need to mention his name. He's out. He's on television every night and his client, the third accuser of Kavanaugh. I don't have the facts, but this suggests that there's much more to learn about the Kavanaugh a scandal and that what we're going to discover is that there were bad actors behind the scenes uh, threatening the peace of the United States with claims that were inaccurate. Yeah, I, I, again, I, the, these are, this is why, you know, what do they say? Uh, a week is a long time in politics. I think three weeks or a month is, a, is an absolute age. So uh, the question is, can it hold for the next, what do we have? 12 days uh, yeah, left? Yeah, very little time. Hours, uh, hours. The, the voting's question. underway now in many states. So, uh, they're already voting. I've voted myself already. So can, will, will that sentiment be kept up? Do, do these recent reports of these what seem to be political intimidations, will they, will they counter that wave towards the Republicans? Too early to tell, too early to tell. We have to know who the perpetrators are. Uh, the House of Representatives, therein is the low bar that the Democrats have set for themselves because political science says that the party out of power gains seats and an average of seats between 25 and 40 in the first midterm up. That would give Nancy Pelosi the speakership one more time unless and until we're also told that the polls in the battleground districts, not the whole country, the polls in the battleground districts, generic, indicate that it's very close. Seb, you're in the Washington, D.C. area, uh, which is surrounded by blue states mostly. And I'm in the New York City area, completely surrounded by blue states, the bluest of the blue, New Jersey, New York and Connecticut. It is very difficult to read uh, the situation in Pennsylvania, in Tennessee, in Illinois, in California, in the districts where the, the tide will go one way or the other. So given all that, given that we can't have good numbers at this point, I, it sounds to me like nobody's confident that there's a great deal of uncertainty, even in the House. I agree. I think when you get Bernie Saunders actually saying that we should never, the Democrats, meaning we, should never have taken a, a blue wave as you know, something that's going to happen for granted, then you know that there's, there's a real problem for, for those that think that this was going to be easy and the normal trends of the incumbent being punished in the midterms would be repeated. That, what, what these individuals who expected that wave to occur forget, Donald Trump's 2016 victory destroyed the existing trend lines. There's no way to model political forecasting today based upon prior elections. And that's where these people fail repeatedly. It, I, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Political polling has gone the way of phrenology. It's a pseudoscience today. 
Rod Rosenstein, he was to appear this week before select members of the House of Representatives to answer questions, especially about the New York Times report of his remarks about the 25th Amendment and about wearing a wire in May of 2017 at the beginning of the Mueller investigation. We're also given information that three principals have left the Mueller investigation, that uh, Michael Flynn will be sentenced in early December. That indicates we're coming to the end of Mueller. I'm looking at Rosenstein, though. His conduct has been hard to uh, summarize, Seb, very hard to summarize. He he has not provided good answers, to my understanding, to Congress or to the American people about why and how he has endorsed and continued to protect the Mueller investigation. We don't know. Not only that, this is an individual who has publicly stated that the Congress exercising its constitutional oversight function of the Department of Justice is extortion. That's a very, very peculiar reading of the Constitution coming from the person who is, to all intents and purposes, the acting Attorney General of the United States. So I've met the man. I I worked with him. I ran across his path when I was in the White House. Uh, He is an arch-bureaucratic survivor, but it seems more and more every day with regards to the Mueller investigation, which we must note has cost the taxpayer now $40 million. It seems that this individual has not always been acting at, in good faith, to say the least. The, the new book is Why We Fight. Sebastian Gorka is the author. He is also the national security strategist for Fox News. I'm John Batchelor. This is The John Batchelor Show.